In the lesson so far, we have learned the physical meaning of volumetric and deviatoric behavior. Now, let's look at some examples where this behavior is useful in practical designs. To this end, we have two examples lined up. The first one is the wine bottle application where the compressible behavior enables a very efficient bottling process. And in the second example, we'll see how the nearly incompressible behavior of air at a pressure can be helpful in improving the designs of footwear. Let's start with the first example, which is the bottling of wine. There are two important factors that the manufacturers consider in wine bottling process. The wine does not leak during transportation or during regular usage and shelf life. And the second one is the bottle is not over sealed. So the wine stopper can still be removed with relative ease. A general recommendation to achieve these two states is that the liquid seal pressure is at least 120 kilopascals and the extraction force, which is nothing but the force required to extract the wine stopper is between 100 to 450 newtons. This is achieved by making a stopper made from cork material. Cork is a special type of naturally occurring material that's known to be both impermeable and compressible, meaning it doesn't absorb any of the liquid and it can change its volume very easily upon deformation. The Poisson's ratio of the cork material is nearly zero. So this makes cork an ideal choice for making stopper for wine bottles. But why does compressibility play such a crucial factor here? Let's use simulations to answer this question. In this example, we'll model two stages of wine bottling. In the first stage, we simulate the bottling process and measure the sealing pressure at the end of the step. In the next stage, we'll try to remove the cork and measure the extraction force. We run the simulation for two sets of materials. Cork, whose Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio are given here, and another hypothetical rubber, which has same Young's modulus as cork, but it's nearly incompressible. So, the Poisson's ratio is closer to 0.5. Now let's investigate the sealing pressure for both the cases. At the end of stage one, here are the contour plots for sealing pressure for both the cases. In case of cork, the maximum pressure is about 2.5 megapascal, and it's almost 6 megapascal in case of hypothetical rubber. This is interesting because both the materials have same elastic stiffness, but cork can change its volume easily, so it isn't creating any noticeable hydrostatic stress. Whereas the rubber, which is nearly incompressible, is creating a hydrostatic pressure, which is almost comparable to its deviatoric stress. So, in either case, the sealing pressure requirement is met for both the materials. So, we move on to the second quantity, which is the extraction force. In this case, we apply a displacement condition on one end of the cork and measure how much force is required to result in such a displacement. From these plots, we can see that the stopper made of cork requires a force of about 160 newtons to be extracted, which falls well within the prescribed limits. Now the same quantity for the rubber material is almost as high as 600 newtons, which is more than the maximum limit of prescribed extraction force. This is again explained due to the compressible nature of the cork. It won't increase the internal forces due to volume change. So it can keep the extraction force down in comparison to the stopper with same dimensions made of rubber, which is nearly incompressible. So in this case, we can clearly see how incompressible materials are used in wine bottling application. In fact, Due to the same reason, foams which are also known to be compressible 
are used in packaging applications and in making cushions in car and airplane seats and even commercial consumer products such as pillows and mattresses. Okay, so while we are on the topic of commercial consumer products that use foams, let's move on to our next example which is footwear for athletes. The running shoes are carefully designed to provide the required ankle support and cushion to the athlete's feet to prevent injuries. Many innovations have been made on the materials front in order to provide the necessary stiffness to the shoe sole and at the same time keeping the weight of the shoes low. One obvious way of doing this is by reducing the mass density of the materials used. Mass density, as you may already know, is the ratio of the mass of the material to its volume. So one genius way in which the footwear designers have reduced the mass density of the shoes is by introducing air pockets inside the shoe sole as part of the design. As a result, the mass of the shoe is reduced without affecting its volume. So the mass density drops automatically. But wouldn't that change the load-bearing capacity of the shoes? One would think it does and one would be right. If you simulate this scenario in a simple shoe sole design, introduce a void in its volume, this is how it deforms under the weight of the athlete. This meets the design requirement of reduced weight, but it doesn't provide as much support. So it's still a design failure. But this is where the genius of the footwear designers comes into picture. After they created these voids, they filled it with air at a specific pressure. Now, this is an isolated system. So, the number of air molecules and their temperature don't change much. So, from the ideal gas equation, the right hand side is always constant. So if there are any changes in the volume of the void, then the pressure tries to adjust itself so their product remains constant. So when an athlete is wearing such shoes and exert their weight on the sole, the void reduces in volume due to deformation, which in turn increases the pressure and resists further change in volume. This tug of war between the pressure and the volume finally finds a state of equilibrium where it supports the weight of the athlete. Which is what we see in the simulation when we introduce this pressurized air. The deformation is lower for the same applied load and we still have the void. In other words, the nearly incompressible nature of pressurized air provides that additional stiffness in the material while keeping the mass density on the lower side. This is how both the design criteria are achieved by taking advantage of the nearly incompressible behavior of pressurized air. There are many such examples that we can see in our daily life where the volumetric behavior of matter plays a big part in how they are used. But for the context of this lesson, we may end our discussion with these two examples.